Hello and welcome to the first annual virtual summit on branding and marketing under the theme Digitization of Marketing and Sustainability in Marketing. I'm Anisha Nayar Dhawan, your host for the day today. Now, COVID-19 has changed the game for the marketing industry. New consumer habits and expectations, as well as new work processes, now require marketers to evolve and adapt without having the benefit of an established playbook. Now, we have pivoted from physical to digital experiences. So now marketers have to overhaul their messaging to consumers and increasingly engage with them virtually. Now, faced with a landscape disrupted by a pandemic, new business models and new applications of tech, marketing professionals have been forced to adapt to changing consumer behavior. As the economic recovery gains momentum, many marketers will find themselves with more dollars to spend. But how and where should they spend them? Will people be yearning for a return to the old normal or continue to embrace the habits that they've developed over the past two years? What messaging will resonate and which channels will reach the post-pandemic consumer? There is no doubt that e-commerce will become crucial for brand success. Social marketing is one that resonates with Gen Z and sustainability and compassion are becoming integral to building a brand. Over the course of the day, we will discuss the go-to marketing strategies for lead generation, personalized content creation, and leveraging different digital channels to effectively reach people and boost sales. This summit will have eminent experts and renowned, renowned industry leaders sharing insights during masterclasses, special sessions, and panel discussions. So to kickstart the summit, I would now like to invite Mr. Thomas Verghese, Chairman, National Council on Branding and Marketing, Asucham, and Business Head Textiles, Aditya Birla Group, to please welcome everybody to this virtual summit. I'll just give a quick description uh, and a bio of uh, Mr. Verghese. Mr. Thomas Verghese is the Business Head of Domestic Textiles, Overseas Spinning and Acrylic Fiber Business of Aditya Birla a group's textile business with operations in India and abroad. He has been with the Aditya Birla Group for about 22 years, holding multiple positions across businesses. His last assignment was as MD and CEO of Aditya Birla Retail Limited. He oversaw the growth of all formats across India and received the Images Coca-Cola Golden Spoon Award for the most admired retailer in India, Food and Grocery in 2010, and the CEO of the year by the Asian Retail Congress in 2012. He has been the chairman of the CII National Committee on Retail for three years between 2009 and 2011, and is currently the co-chair of the Water Cluster Board of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. Please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Thomas Verghese. Thank you, Anisha. Um, uh, let me extend a warm welcome to all the delegates uh, to this ASOCAM's Virtual Branding and Marketing Summit. Uh, I pray that this new year will bring in a lot of prosperity for all of us. Um, a very warm welcome, very especially to my friend, Sam Balsara, Chairman and Managing Director of Madison Group, and Mr. Sogata Gupta, another very old dear friend, who is the Managing Director and CEO of Marico Limited. It is an honor to have you with us today, and we are delighted that you've been able to spare time out of your very busy calendars to address the summit. I would also like to thank Vasudev Mukherjee, the Associate Secretary General of ASOCHEM, who is also part of this inaugural address for being here and for putting the might of ASOCHEM behind this whole Congress. ASOCHEM has constituted the first ever National Council on Branding and Marketing with Sandeep Goel as the co-chair and with me, Thomas Verghese, as the chairman of this first committee. The key objectives of forming this council was to keep marketing professionals abreast across the participating companies of ASOCHEM with the latest developments in branding and marketing and to have a futuristic view on how branding and marketing will evolve in the years to come. The council has already conducted five webinars last year with eminent speakers and subject matter experts. These were received very well by the audiences. We are welcoming the new year 2022, now with a virtual summit on branding and marketing spread over today and tomorrow. 
I think people like Sam and Sogata are aware that, you know, I took a lot of pride as the chairman of the CIS, both retail and marketing committee of having these thought leadership summits. And uh, we, I'm delighted to say that, you know, I'm really very, very happy with the way the summit has shaped up. And I'm sure it will be the first uh, in a long list of many years where ASOCHEM will be able to create this property of marketing and branding summit, just like we did earlier, many years ago at CII. We have got diversified speakers, speakers from FMCG, fashion and retail, health and wellness, automotive sector, manufacturing, and a number of people from the diversified conglomerates. And also a very special session is planned on neurosciences in branding and marketing. COVID-19 has brought in customer preference for personalized service. Customer preference for sustainable brands have changed the role, the rules of the game that has been followed so far by marketing professionals. Availability of information at fingertips have kept our customers more informed than ever before. The million customer mark, which was once considered a milestone will soon get revisited as through technology, some innovative brands have surpassed this milestone in less than 20 days. The latest example, as many of you will know, is of Pokemon Go, which crossed 1 million customers on the 19th day. Reliance Geo in its launch was adding an average of 0.6 to 1 million customers every day. So there has been a huge shift in the landscape uh, given the role of technology, et cetera. Certain new age brands and organizations have challenged and set new benchmarks. Like for example, you look at Tesla's over, overall market capitalization at over 1 trillion is much higher than some of the market cap of the top three, four companies, including Toyota, Volkswagen, BWD, Auto, and Mercedes. The USP for Tesla is their focus on green energy to fuel their vehicles. In addition, we see declining new norms, uh, defining new norms of safety for its passengers, self-driving digital technology. All these are changing the name of the game as far as the auto industry is concerned. These ideas once thought of as being impossible have shaken the complete automobile industry and has caught its competitors by surprise. Companies are now focusing on digital as their growth driver and to understand their customers better and certain organizations have already transformed themselves as digital companies. Keeping these trends in mind, the ASOCAM's Branding and Marketing Council deliberated over many sessions and finally decided to keep digital and sustainability as the key themes for this virtual summit. Such a summit is now happening in a virtual mode, uh, which I'm sure two years back we would have all thought was almost impossible. I think we have maybe close to 600 participants as I last knew, and I'm hopeful that this will be of great value to all of them. To ensure that the maximum takeaway from the two-day session in a virtual mode for the participants, the session has been confined to only three hours in a day, comprising of a keynote address, a masterclass, and a panel discussion. ASOCAM has vibrant plans for the year 2022. And we will be having webcasts on various topics in the coming year too. I would like to take this opportunity very, very specially to thank the ASOCAM Secretariat comprising of, of Avinash Kishan, uh, the Associate Secretary General, Mr. Basudev, and last but not the least, my colleague Anant, who has played a very major role in the shaping of this Congress. I would also like to thank all the people who were there on the task force for this summit. I thank them from the bottom of my heart for the effort they have put in. And again, I'd like to thank the participants and uh, we look forward very much to the illuminating addresses by my friend Sam Balsara and Sugata Gupta and I will not stand in between all of you. So I now hand over again back to Anisha uh, to do the honors. And, Wish everyone two days of wonderful deliberations. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Mr. Varghese. Uh, I'm really pepped up for what's coming up over the next two days, and I'm sure all the participants just can't wait to hear the greats from the world of branding and marketing, to see and to understand and to, uh, you know, uh, see their vision for what lies ahead. So I'll take uh, no more time. And I would now like to invite uh, Mr. Sam Bilsara, Chairman and MD of the Madison Group to give the inaugural address. Uh, Ms. Sambal Sar has nearly 50 years of experience in marketing and advertising, of which the last 33 years have been entrepreneurial. Madison World has grown to become India's largest Indian-owned communications company. Madison Media is the largest independent media agency by size, uh, by, by share, and the fifth largest independent media agency by size in the world. The Economic Times brand equity ad agency, Reckner, ranks uh, Sam as India's most influential media person for last for 11 years. And Sam is also the recipient of the Advertising Agencies Association of India's Lifetime Achievement Award at Club of Kolkata's Hall of Fame Award and has entered the International Advertising Association's Hall of Fame. So we're very, very delighted to have with us uh, Mrs. Sam Bilsara. And I'll uh, give the stage to Mr. Bilsara to please address the audience. Thank you, Anisha. And good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my pleasure to talk to all of you this afternoon uh, on the environment that all marketing people operate in today. Now, they say the only constant is change. And whilst it's true that everything is changing around us, as Thomas reminded us, I would say the pace of change, not just in technology, but also in media, is taking place at an amazing rate. Paradoxically, this rate of change is making life easier for the consumer and at the same time, more complex. But as I see it, there is no doubt that for the manufacturer, or the advertiser or the seller, life has become more complex, more competitive, and there are more challenges to face in the corporate world today than ever before. In the old world, most companies were evaluated on their profitability and absolute levels of profit generated. Today, we have done a 180 degree turn and the mantra seems to be scale, how to sell more and preferably globally, how to acquire more customers and to help with profits. The IPO of Zomato, a loss-making company, was oversubscribed by over 38 times. And this loss-making company is now valued not by marketing people like yourselves, or by lay investors, but by shrewd and financially savvy experts at over one lakh crores because it has 32.1 million average active users. So you can say everything has changed. It's a new, different, brave world. But I'd like to ask, have things really changed? It was Sergio Zeman, the man responsible for launch of new Coke, withdrawing it in a few months and reintroducing Coke Classic, who is supposed to have said at the turn of this century, the purpose of marketing is to sell more product to more consumers more frequently at a higher price. I doubt if this purpose of marketing is going to change in the near future. Closer home, my home, in advertising, Stephen Leacock at the turn of the 19th century said, advertising may be described as the science of arresting human intelligence long enough to get money out of it. I doubt if anybody has been able to better this description 
since then or will be in the near future. About 20 years ago, addressing a Madison internal conference, I said, your clients want three things more than anything else. More innovation, reduce costs, and agility. If I address them today, I would more or less say the same thing. So the more things change, the more they remain the same in terms of fundamentals. Of course, the structure of markets have changed, consumers have changed, their behavior, attitude, consumer patterns have dramatically changed. And therefore the tools, techniques, strategies, and tactics that we use today have to be and are very different. The true meaning and implication of the VUCA world we live in has been brought home by COVID. There's more science, there's more data, there's more number crunching, and these are all going to only accelerate. I dare say that media agencies in India are at the top of their game. Despite all the complexities in the media world, the proliferation of media options at unimaginable scale and the unpredictable nature of the rapidly changing consumer have all been mastered by the agency media man who tracks his attitude, behavior, and actions and delivers to the advertiser a customized option backed by data science with dollops of creativity and ideas to reach customers in large numbers at an insignificant cost. And very often he just does not reach them but also helps convert them to buyers. You may call me bias, but I feel no industry offers their wares that delivers so much value to its customers for so little in return. My friend Sogata may not agree with me in this. To the young people listening to me, I would say, there is no better place in the world to be in right now than in India. And there is no better industry to be in than marketing, advertising, and media. It's not for no reason that the Western world is focused so much on making India a part of its growth plans. Where else will you find the billion consumers, many of them, or most of them young, rapidly urbanizing, educated, hardworking, English speaking, with growing incomes and more important, growing aspirations. We all know the world produces more than what it can consume. So marketing and advertising will always be in demand, according to me. The advertising pie, that we call ADEX is constantly increasing, yet there is a lot of headroom for growth. The advertising market in India over the last decade grew at an average annual compounded growth rate of 12%, growing to about 67,000 crores till 2019 before COVID th hit us. And if you think it can't grow any further, think again. The advertising to GDP ratio in India is only 0.35%, whereas the global average is at least twice that number. So we are going to benefit from a double whammy, I feel. Not only is India's GDP going to grow at least by 8% over the next few years, the advertising to GDP ratio of 0.35% is bound to grow. And 
in this constantly changing, evolving, complex market, we will require highly capable, young, both left-brained and right-brained people to unlock the economy's potential. Look at the change that has taken place in ADEX in the last 10 years. Print, which was the ruling monarch for decades and which had a market share of 42% as recently as a decade ago, is now down to 22%. And you just can't go by global trends because whilst in India, print is at 22%, globally, print is down to just 6%. In India, it has moved from being the number one medium to now a number three medium. TV, which has rapidly grown over the last three decades and is the dominant medium in India today with a share of 42% in COVID year 20, continues to lead Indian addicts, again, defying global trends, since globally, TV is only 27% of addicts. Whilst digital in India has grown rapidly in the last 10 years at a compounded annual growth rate of 35%, and now enjoys a share of about 30%, it is severely under-indexed by global benchmarks. Globally, today, digital enjoys a dominant, dominant market share of 60%. So 60% of the estimated $700 billion that the world spends on advertising is spent on digital media. So it's clear that in India, there is more change to come and with the amazing growth of digital players and their bulging customer bases, these one-time advertisers are going to become advertising mediums themselves. As you know, we live in a world characterized by overproduction, rapid transfer of technology with consumer choice multiplying, advertising noise multiplying, and prices of many products are static or reducing or extremely competitive. If I may be allowed to crystal gaze a bit into the near future, maybe the next five years, as I see it, marketing advertising is going to become even more important than ever before. The marketer will be king along with the technology man. The creative man has to make sure that his creative piece of communication has the power to stand out amongst about 70,000 crores of advertising. And the media man has to ensure that the communication reaches precisely the identified audience and no more. Marketing advertising is going to be therefore under greater pressure to perform and deliver given shorter executive terms of the CMO and CEO in many companies and investors pressure on quick returns. Marketing adver advertising is going to be under pressure to deliver in shorter time frames, and increasingly managements will look for outcomes and not just outputs. Life of both brands and individual campaigns is going to get shorter. Earlier, some iconic campaigns were run for years. Now it is weeks and it is common to see out of home campaigns run for a week today in metro cities. I wouldn't be surprised if digital out of home campaigns are soon run just for a day. Although digital is already 60% of global spend and India has crossed 30%, 
I feel in India for some time, multimedia is going to rule the rules for big brands. Most research, both global and Indian, show this to be true. The audiovisual medium across most media, TV, digital, and outdoor for sure, will become the standard. And although the number of English speaking consumers in India are rising, language media, including some minor languages and dialects will rule. Soon one will see more and more customized content tailor-made for individual regional markets and regional heroes and celebrities will be in big demand for advertising. Training and education will become far more structured for advertising and marketing than it is today. May not be as structured as it is for medicine or engineering, but it should be and will be considerably more than what it is now. And I feel because of all these pressures, the marketing and advertising men of tomorrow will stand apart from the boys. Thank you, Thomas, for inviting me once again. And thank you, everybody, for listening to me. Thank you, Sam, for the brilliant address. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Balsara, for your address. Uh, all uh, those watching you here have uh, very big takeaways uh, from what you have, to, have had to say. And I'm sure uh, during the course of the day today, uh, they will get much more information and insights into where branding and marketing is heading. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now I would like to call upon Mr. Sapata Gupta, Managing Director and CEO of Marico, uh, to please give us the keynote address. Uh, a dynamic leader, Mr. Gupta is responsible for uh, driving the company's growth and strengthening its presence both nationally and internationally. He has helped transform Marico into a high performing business with a commitment to sustainable development and the best in class governance. He has been recognized as the best CEO private sector at Forbes India Leadership Awards 2019. He was also featured in the top 100 business leaders list 2020 by Impact Digital Power 100. He has recently been recognized as India's best leaders in the time of crisis in 2021 by Great Places to Work. Please welcome the Managing Director and CEO of Marico, Mr. Shogata Gupta, who's joining us all the way from Dubai. Mr. Gupta. Yeah, thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Sam. Uh, what I'll now uh, try to do in the next 10-15 uh, minutes is give a perspective of how digital transformation is, uh, I think, uh, revolutionizing the world of branding and marketing. Now, if you look at digital transformation, it has been a highly talked about theme for the last uh, couple of years. I think while everyone expected that digital technology would make things faster, what few people expected was the social impact that digital media combined with online connectivity would have in the country. And if you really look at it, I think unlike some of the developed markets in the Western world, uh, I think India has significantly leapfrogged. I think digital has been on its long march when the world got hit by COVID-19 pandemic and the healthcare emergency coupled with the lockdowns and the new ways of working, which uh, I think all of you are uh, well, uh, well aware of, converted this long march into a sprint and has made digital integral to the life of consumers and successes of businesses. So from the India perspective, I see uh, three key drivers for digital disruption. The first is, I think, the COVID-induced inflection in e-commerce. Uh, what would have been a gradual expansion of five years, perhaps, had got compressed over a last you know, 12 to 15 months. Uh, COVID-19 provided a massive stimulus to India's, uh, I think, EV e tail penetration, accelerating by 12 months, I think the retail market shrunk by 5%. If I look at FY21, this year there will be slight growth. However, the Indian, I think the e-commerce market got a 25% growth. And if you really look at some of the industries, the contribution of e-commerce actually doubled to tripled. I think the second thing that has been witnessing is a digital democratization. 
Uh, smaller towns are now accounting for four out of the five new online shoppers, and therefore it's no longer a very, very urban centric thing. Uh, e shopping access is available to more than 95% of India's PIN codes. So, just as the telecom revolution hit us, you know, in some years ago, we are now seeing the e commerce and the e retail revolution enter, I mean, entering the vast uh, and countryside, including a lots of rural population. I think the entry barriers to new brands have changed. And I think if you really look at some of the brands in our sector, I mean, some of the successes, whether it's, you know, Mama Earth, Wow, uh, look at some of the other successes. I think the thing is that there are asset like go to market models for insurgent brands. Uh, has empowered Bharat small sellers and micro entrepreneurs to really look at today in Amazon and other platforms like Amazon, Flipkart. And others, other, other, other similar platforms are kind of small resellers. Today, it's given tremendous opportunity, and something which Sam talked about that today there's opportunity in terms of doing business. The huge number of entrepreneurs have come out, and I think the low cost of failure and experimentation has enabled entrepreneurs to drive the next set of innovations. So, I think India continues to be an exciting country for entrepreneurs. The largest set of unicorns, other than US and to an extent, China comes from here. In fact, if you really look at it, some of the biggest disruptions in the last decade has been led by insurgents who have taken traditional business concepts like Amazon, Uber, and then applied innovative digital technologies and marketing models to reach and serve the consumer. Within India, we are seeing a completely new wave of innovations in business models being driven by homegrown startups like Baiju's, Paytm, Nika, Zomato, and I think uh, if we really look at some of the recent IPOs without, with some exceptions has been, I think, uh, been a, so the, the tremendous success shows the confidence I think people have in these businesses. They are leveraging technology to solve issues which have become even more relevant in a pandemic hit world. Online payment to online education, contactless shopping and deliveries. And if we really look at the digitization the government is supporting today, especially in online you know, payment systems or some of the things on e-governance or and even the some of the things on online education i think the country has undergone a really quiet revolution in terms of digitization digital is bound to change each and every element of how businesses are run it has already significantly crunched the innovation cycles let me tell you we have two parts of the business the mothership where the innovation cycle is 9 to 10 months still and I have, we have Beardo where the innovation cycle is actually 30 to 60 days. It is redefining the consumer expectation on speed of service. It is redefining ways of working for the employees. It is redefining the go-to market models and redefining where and how you know, marketing interacts with the consumer. And I think the biggest change that has happened is that it has led to fast, you know, fast learning fail, what we call sprints, and a lot of experimentation in the way uh, Categories are launched, especially in FMCG. I can tell you some, we, for example, are launching a lot of digital brands. We are experimenting, uh, doing a, a lot of test and learns. And actually you can get a kind of a reading about the market and the consumer adoption within a period of 30 to 45 days. In the olden days, you used to do these six months, nine months prototypes and test markets. I think for the marketers, we are seeing five key areas being reshaped by the digitalized digitization trends. The first is shift towards digital marketing. Uh, a significant amount of spend today is on digital marketing across Marico countries. And I mean, countries like Southeast Asia, we spend 50% of the spends on digital. In India, we are spending around 20% this year. So consumers are also spending more time on social media, OTT platforms, and TV. Digital marketing is going to become increasingly strategic and might even overtake traditional marketing for incumbents in the next five years. Uh, we already, as I said, in India at 20 and uh, maybe another next five to seven years, this number could double. I think the other thing is sharper matchmaking. If you really look at one first party data and data is the new fuel, 1P data will increasingly become a source of strategic advantage and is equivalent of a gold rush for this decade. So it is enabling brands to keep target the right consumers with precise messaging and personalized offerings resulting in higher conversion and repeat rates. In fact, it's not about efficient marketing anymore, but complete business models, which are built around 1P data. And therefore, that's the other competency and the area which marketers have to talk about is 
the entire area of 1P data, uh, the area of analytics. The third thing is about the empowered consumer. Uh, consumers are increasingly looking for made-for-me products. Personalization is bound to become increasingly important. I'll, I'll share with you one of the interesting uh, product categories uh, we saw in the US, and it's like a pillow uh, which uh, helps you sleep. And even there's a consumer hotline which actually someone sings a lullaby for you when you, you are put to sleep. So, I mean, these are the kind of personalizations one can get into. Consumers are demanding new niche categories like body scrubs, vitamin C serums that are not mainstream in India. So, therefore, this is the perfect uh, this one for not only mass customization, but niche customization. In fact, if you look at the latest trends on customization in our industry, in personal, uh, you know, personal care, uh, care you know, in terms of hair care or skin care, uh, today, based on your skin and hair types, one can design products, which can be then shipped out to you in the next 72 hours. Social listening is enabling marketeers to identify niche and emerging consumer trends and drive organizations innovation agenda. Crowdsourcing and pre-prototyping initiatives are providing customers a direct voice to the brand. In fact, customers are, consumers are increasingly participating in product design and actually market research. And in fact, one of the things that uh, a silent revolution has taken place today is a lot of market research today is online and especially during COVID where actually physical you know, reach and physical market research is not necessarily possible. I think the other thing is about influencers. Influencers will have a growing impact. Word of mouth and local influencers has always been an important part of the way India shops. But I think social commerce, peer and community influence will play a much more significant role for the next wave of online shoppers. And we'll see uh, at least a 2x CAGR versus e-commerce. And if you really look at it, I think uh, this is one more area we'll see uh, a social revolution. Uh, there's a continuous feedback loop, campaign ROI measurements and optimization has been one of the biggest challenges for marketing teams traditionally. Uh, I think uh, obviously, as you know, marketing has traditionally been very resource hungry, but technology tools are enabling real-time consumer feedback, much sharper ROI measurements and the optimizations and marketing spends. Sam spoke about you know, how the campaign cycles are very, very short today. An out-of-home campaign has run for a week. Earlier, traditional TV advertising, you ran one creative for six months or a year. In fact, on today, on uh, a lot of A-B testing, which we do, we change creatives in Beardo actually once during a day. So that's the kind of frequency uh, one can look at. And therefore, it calls for far more agility, far more, I think, speed, far more adoption uh, than traditional marketing. I will just uh, give my closing thoughts. I think digitization has opened a new world of opportunities for the marketers. And therefore, a lot of traditional marketers who were born in and who started work in the early 2000s or late 90s with mass media have had to actually retool themselves. Otherwise, they will uh, become vestigial and redundant in this set of things. Because in a digital setup, if you are above 30 or 35 year old, and therefore, I think things have completely changed. And I think armed with so much data and so many tools to support the marketing decisions, as well as direct access to consumers, influencer, a marketeer is empowered like never before. So it's a completely different thing because, you know, in the, in the old days, 50% uh, of the spend used to say in marketing, you don't know where it is going. But today, I think you can really know what every dollar is getting into. However, one must avoid the pitfall of digitization for the sake of it. And it's important because, uh, you know, digital transformation is not a fashionable word, you know. Digital transformation must be led from the top and it has to be led by everybody and it has to come with what I call a significant drive to drive overall capability of marketers today. Because as I said that the, today, the uh, slightly older traditional marketers are perhaps not equipped to handle the world of digitization. So I think it's important to have a clear vision of a couple of things. Uh, firstly, what is your business model and brand strategy and how will digitization you know, would enable drive it? For example, I think we have bucketed in Marico three sets of brand. One is called digitally first brands, like which are actually primarily sold in e-commerce. There's a second bucket of brands, which are premium personal care brands or premium food brands, which are 
digital primary digital brands means around 40 50% of the spends are digital and the third bucket is the mass brands where we still spend 90% of the brands on mass media now the kind of people managing the brands the kind of approach managing the brands have to be different it's not a one size fits all for each and every brand so therefore i think the second thing is what are the capabilities that your team needs to deliver the digitization agenda and as i said that clearly digital capability is one of the digital and analytics capability will be a much much uh, this one demand capability in demand and it's very very critical that the marketing teams across all industries not just fmcg have this capability i think what is important also to have the right unit economics because if you don't have the right unit economics and the roi of the model spending on digital is not a great thing the fourth thing is i think what are the uh, you know are you capturing and leveraging data i think it's important and that's why a lot of real large companies are getting into what i call d2c opportunities although they may, might not make business sense in terms of roi and profitability but for example we have a safola store do i make money on safola store the answer is no but i do get access to data which actually helps us in the long term actually to have meaningful relationship with consumers who can trust the app sell and therefore it is very very important to know what is with with data even to give you an example every month a significant number of people write to a quality cell on they give good feedback now in the previous you know 5 years ago we were just responding to it and that data was lying in some excel dump today we are actually harnessing this data to have much more meaningful relationships to actually do check out on innovation to check out on different things with consumers lastly i think uh, we need to have our companies need to have a sustainable model for digital scale up there are a lot of tools available that gives you a digital maturity assessment it is important that uh, in a digital journey of organizations we take it uh, you know uh, phases at a time the only thing i must say that because of all the insurgent brands today you don't have a luxury in terms of a digital transformation three year or a five year journey it has to be more of a three and a five quarter journey so in to sum up all i have to say is that i think uh, it's a very very exciting world the digital trans digital transformation has you know and especially which has got accelerated by covid i think the indian consumers are completely changing the marketplace is changing and therefore it is imperative that the marketers of today uh, have to completely you know reframe the way you think and i'm talking about the marketing leadership because you have an exciting set of talent i think india is a hotbed of talent india is a, a supply it supplies talent to the rest of the world and in terms of digital capability in terms of the tools in the times of analytics i think is the best place to be and i completely agree with sam and i think only thing i would say is that companies that will succeed must have a method in the madness as opposed to being you know uh, you know what i say just participating in this digital journey so digital should be used to just not play but to win over the next 5 years and therefore digital capability will be a source of sustainable competitive advantage just like for the you know 10 years ago it was just about brands and distribution today digital capability will be a significant source of competitive advantage for gr- profitable growth of a lot of industries including our ffcg industry over the next 2 3 to 5 years so thank you this is all i had to say and thank you for your patient listening thank you sugata for that uh, wonderful insights from your personal experience and also from your running one of india's most uh, admired fmcg companies thank you so much thank you for being with us and thank you for taking time out even though you're on an overseas trip uh, so over to you anisha for the rest of the deliberation thank you thank you so much uh, mr gupta for taking the time and uh, addressing the audience uh, you've raised many questions on how uh, brands are homegrown brands direct to consumers are coming up in no time and the kind of strategies they're deploying uh, kind of shakes up uh, the established players as well uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us and sharing your thoughts with us uh, now i would like to request uh, mr basudev mukherjee uh, assistant secretary general asocham 
uh, to please give the concluding remarks. Uh, and uh, we are very grateful to all our speakers for joining us for the inaugural session. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> it is my um, privilege and pleasure to deliver the concluding remarks at this very thought-provoking session. I would like to thank our speakers, Mr. Thomas Vargis, Mr. Sam uh, Balsara and Mr. Swagata Gupta for their incisive remarks. Mr. Sam Balsara, we wholeheartedly agree with you that the best place to be in right now is India. And that too in the marketing and, uh, and advertising field. With the rapidly growing economy, the rate of consumption is growing at a very fast pace. And this is only expected to increase the size of the marketing and advertising industry. With the pace of technological change, the marketing professional along with the technical professional will hold the key to growth. Mr. Swagata Gupta, your perspective on the impact of the digital transformation on the marketing landscape in India is indeed eye-opening. The digital transformation has helped small sellers reach far-flung customers, <clears throat> thereby increasing their market. The country has indeed undergone a quiet revolution in terms of adopting digital technologies. Uh, I would like to thank all the participants and sponsors for joining us for this inaugural session of what seems to be a very promising two-day uh, conference. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the sponsors for their support and um, uh, participation at this event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mukherjee, for uh, summing up uh, all uh, that our speakers have spoken about today. Really, there's lots coming up even now. We've got masterclass and we've got panel discussions coming up where we will glean more insight from our speakers. And we'd like to thank uh, all those uh, speakers who have joined us during the inaugural. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, uh, Mr. Balsara, Mr. Gupta, uh, Mr. Varghese. Uh, thank you so much for being with us.